Alexandro Badiou and Schizano Stevie again. Well, again, he haven't been on the first one, but we continue to follow up on uh, Yahoo Open Hockey event that didn't take place a um, month ago in Bucharest. So we have a bunch of questions we're going to address to Alexandro and see what it's going to come up on. First one is like. <laughs> yeah, say hello to him. Hi. <laughs> First one well, question we're gonna have is uh, you have you want Yahoo boss hike yeah. that they take, take a hike called it gathers a lot of government related data and which is not public and difficult to access. It's uh, public but difficult to access. You know, from well, since nobody way. knows much about it, it's not exactly public. <laughs> And then you're using Yahoo query language to, to deal with this data. Um, uh, yeah, a bunch of Yahoo technologies I use to augment the data and get more information. How whole thing is developed from A to Z? I mean, what's going on there behind? Uh, well, I wrote a Python script to fetch the data, to parse the HTML from their site and get the data into a structured way. And then I used Yahoo Boss and YQL to get more information on on top of the original data, and also Place Finder to uh, geolocate them to do a reverse geo geolocation, so to get them pinpointed on a map in order for uh, for the heat map I did. So you do a sort of mash up there, data aggregation, not just data collecting, and then basically that's it. Yeah, it was data collecting, but also. Um, putting it, in, uh, taking data from other places as well, making it into one thing and then uh, meshing it up with various technologies. Uh -huh. With uh, playlist automatic, how this idea came up? I mean, what Yahoo products you've been using there and, and why was the reason for it? Uh, I like, I, I love uh, having a playlist generated for me. I'm very lazy, I don't like to do my own playlists. And uh, all this software I've been using is uh, limited to whatever you have on your computer. So uh, I had this idea in the back of my head for some time to use the internet, which is full of MP3s and songs, which I probably don't know of, to try to, to use that as a source for, for this. And uh, my idea was to basically allow you to input anything and try to figure out what your mood is or if you're quoting a particular song or anything like that. And what I did was I used Yahoo Boss to search songmeanings.net and try to find in the comments on a particular song or songs, find the words you're, uh, you, you entered. And I got a list of seeds, so to speak, a list of, uh, a list of songs. It was just a string. It wasn't artist and title or something like that. And then I used uh, Econest, the Econest API, to actually search for structured information about each song. And then I used Yahoo YQL with Last.fm to actually gather, uh, you know, tags about the song to be able to filter them and also related songs to it. And all of them at the end kind of build up this playlist of. Uh, of songs and um, is it your first music service you ever built or you've been doing something similar before <coughs> no it was my first foray into the you did after anything with it i mean you left it as a application it's, that people can use or something it's it's left as it is right now i'd, I'd like to to build on top of that since i wanted to use groove shark mm -hmm. to 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 generate the playlist automatically but groove shark has a closed API that didn't give me any access to it, so I yeah. ended up using uh, YouTube. And I'd like to actually end up using Groove Shark and probably tune it up a bit since it's not really. Why uh, not to make it as, for example, Boxy TV channel or something? You know, they set up boxes where you XBMC, Boxy, others, when you're creating your little mashup application, it's a position to be and people can use this keyboard, whatever console, mm. for any other reason. Uh, my first focus would be just to improve it because right now the results are not that well all the time. Uh, it was as it was shown in the presentation at Yahoo Open Hack. You know, I had Rebecca Black showing up everywhere because people comment on her and tag her as metal and as yeah. punk and as all this kind of stuff. So my my first focus would be to to switch from YouTube maybe to to Groove Shark and try to improve at least the, the algorithm. 
the, the way the data is fetched and the sources and so on. So nice. Have you ever been to any other hackathon? So it's only your first event you it's have my first event. Yeah, it's my first event. Are you thinking to continue this way? I mean, you're going <laughs> to search for, for any other events like this one now somewhere? Maybe outside I'd like to go to others. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we didn't really have a lot of hacks, hackathons in Romania. I think. Yeah, unfortunately. There yes. were some smaller local events organized by Vurbe, which is this local gather of uh, web programmers. Yeah. But it, it is very small and a long time ago, I think. So yeah, the last one I seen, it was like 30 people, something like that, it was a thing. Yeah. yeah. But uh, sure, I would, I would love to continue like, uh, doing, it, doing it. It was a really nice experience. For many, gonna be big interest about your daily job. What you actually do for living? What brings food on your table? <laughs> yes, um, it's not that interesting. <laughs> I uh, I work for uh, a Dulmec, which is a Romanian company, but it's uh, U.S. funded. Where uh, we're building all sorts of local products for uh, for Bucharest and for Romania in general. What a Dulmec does? Uh, we focused. Uh, we started focused on search and uh, building, you know, vertical sites, niche search engines mm -hmm. for different types of products or categories. And we branched into the deal Groupon type business lately. So, uh, kind of these are the two directions we're we're following right now. I see. So it's somewhat between Groupon and Yellow Pages, something like. It's, they're kind of separate. Yeah, we have something like Yelp in the US. It's called Urbo, urbo.com. Uh, we have all this data which we gathered ourselves for about a year. We have a lot of data, you know, starting from the clubs around here to the non-stop place where you can buy bread at 2 in the morning in your neighborhood. And we also have uh, we also have two two deal sites, DealFever.ro, which is targeted to towards women, women type deals, and Adulmag.ro, which is a deal aggregator. Uh, sites that made by Adulmag they usually name it in English, right? Yeah. But it's websites made by Adulmag made made in English. I mean, no. the, the, the title, no? No, no, it's uh, it's for Romania. So it's Romania. No, the, I mean names, the title, so. What it was in the fever deal thingy that come? They're not naming it in a uh, Romanian way. Yeah, some words are, are exactly. They're they're still uh, they're still in English. It's I, I think it's it happens to a lot of sites here. It's kind of hard to find translations, good translations for some words. Yeah, it's the same like translating from English to French. <laughs> yeah. It's hard <laughs> to so yeah, I seen this one. How stuff works for you on uh, during the day? What's your development environment? What tools are you using? How the whole thing organized there? I'm not organized. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I mostly use macOS and Linux. So I guess my tools. You know, I, I love TextMate, which is I think is the best text editor ever, and uh, Transmit for moving around files and I, I think realistically those are my two main tools along with the terminal mm. the, the stuff I use every day yeah I use Photoshop from time to time or different uh, other specific tools but every day you, you'll probably find me with TextMate and TrustMate open is it because you're influenced by Linux environment all the time? So this is why like your preferred tools and yeah. things? Yeah. yeah. I, the kind of technologies I use are Linux based, so to speak. Like open source, like PHP and Python and MySQL. And I, I kind of grew up using them under Linux. So it's kind of gotten the, into my habit to, nice. to work from the command line. And For how long are you doing it? Uh, it's a, I don't know, 12 years. It's a pretty good one. Yes. Web mm -hmm. development for about 8 years, I think. General programming for about 12. So you're more into web development right now, right? What technologies you mostly focus during the day? I mean, if we looking just in a scope of the day, what more occupies you? Um, yes, I'm into, more into web development right now. I'm using Drupal a lot. And we're using Drupal at, at the Toolmac, so 
mostly I'm gonna work. I'm gonna be working on Drupal related stuff. Uh, but uh, recently, well, for a couple of months, I've also started doing mobile development for Android and iPhone. iPhone is more recent. For Android, we actually launched a couple of, uh, of applications. So from time to time, it's not just Drupal; it's Android or maybe you know iPhone development. Uh -huh. But right now, it's mostly Drupal. How is the Drupal community in Romania? How big is it? And do they have any meetups or anything? The Drupal community here is very small. It's, we're not really, it's not really well organized. Partially my fault because I'm handling Drupal.ro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm not doing a very good job, I must admit. But uh, we, we're growing it. It's, it's becoming, uh, Drupal is becoming uh, known here. It's getting big here too. We, so you're planning to do any meetups? So we had, we, we had the first Drupal camp, Romanian Drupal camp last year in Timisoara. And we had, a week before Yahoo Open Hack, we had Drupal camp Bucharest, which, uh, which was pretty good. It was, uh, it was really nice. And we're planning to do one, again, another one in Cluj, I think, uh, in the fall. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's nice, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people coming from different countries here trying it, and everyone was trying to hire people. So. Drupal is uh, Drupal is getting big. It's a normal stuff because people come in here first of all because of cheap labor and it's like you know wild wild west like hey, here we go we can do something about it. Yes, it's a lot of them actually said that. Yes, it's it's cheaper here, uh, but uh, still you know it's it's nice. I mean to to see that it's there's this. Uh, thing going on and the, that people are actually starting to use Drupal more and more and uh, you can actually get a job really easy now as opposed to, I don't know, I started using Drupal I think, I don't know, seven, eight years ago and nobody knew about Drupal here at least and out there, you know, it wasn't as widespread as, as it is now, you know, Obama wasn't using it yet. <laughs> but. Uh, we're trying to grow the community. We we set up about two years ago uh, Drupal Romania, which is a non-profit organization. And with Drupal Romania, we're doing we've done this Drupal camp mm -hmm. uh, meetings. We're gonna try to do some local meetings as well. Maybe not Bucharest related, but rather you know area based, so people around Bucharest could come here, or we could to. Timisoara for one day of talks and meetups, and uh, but it's still a plan. It's planning right now. We, we haven't decided anything. Good. Okay, let's get back a little bit uh, to open hack stuff. You presented there three projects. You came there with already prepared homework, or you just ideas appeared in your head just there when you just entered in there and everything, you know, color it. And, yeah. uh, I had the wonderful. ideas. I had the ideas, but I didn't come prepared. I haven't worked on them at all before the event. So it's all coded there in 24 hours, so is it worth yeah. there? Yes. Good. You have any strategies, any tips? So, I mean, how you getting good work done on time and, you know, how you manage to get it on Hackathon with that short time to do it? Well, what worked for me, at least, was staying focused. Uh, and trying to, what I did was I did every one of them. I didn't work in parallel. I did one, I ended, I ended it, started another one, and so on. And also not trying to over-engineer it. Because as a programmer, you know, I'm very, I like nice clean code and I'm very tempted to, you know, this doesn't look right. Yeah. I would like yeah. to. Like, release fast, release often. That, that's yes. the thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. So, for example, that the parser which I did for, for the for take a hike, you know, it's horrible. I mean, I'm not proud of it, but it did the job. It does the job. Yeah. yeah, if I would have spent another, I don't know, four hours making it very clean and you know handling errors more in a much graceful way. After all, way, you, you know. had 90 seconds to present the whole thing, and it's like there is no way gonna any money is gonna look inside. Yeah, like plus you, that. You get horrified. Exactly. Like, plus that. What's I, happened there? So I I didn't really over engineer anything. It was uh, it's probably you know very quick. Some of it very bad code, I guess, but that worked for me because I gained a lot of time not trying to make it pretty or I can make it pretty afterwards, you know, yeah. after the contest, in my own time. So I guess staying focused and not trying to over-engineer things is 
this is what worked for me. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I have enough. So it's not like you had some specific choice of technology or something. First of all, it's like being focused, knowing what you want to do. Yeah. And using the right tools to do the right job. Of yeah, it. yeah. True. I mean, it, uh, I had some experience with Python and parsing stuff, so that came What you've been using there as a computer? I mean, the, what your workstation and, and the hack event was Mac or just yeah. running Linux? No, just a Mac. A Mac. Yeah. Have you ever been to states, to New York City or some? No. no? Never? Never. You would like to visit there? <laughs> of course. This whole. <laughs> Hopefully. And the guys in the work, they're gonna give you free time for that. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> they, they have to. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna quit your job. Exactly. You? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have any preference on people who you would like to meet there during the visit? Dead or alive, anyone? Dead or alive. Uh, yeah. yes. I'd like to meet some dead people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a tough question. There's so many people which you know I, uh, I admire and I'd like to meet. But, uh, I won't mention dead people. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, it's, living it's people. Those ones. Yes, living people. Uh, I like Steve Wozniak a lot. Yeah. And. Um, not really technology related. I would really like to meet William Gibson. Uh, he's a writer, but he, since he started cyberpunk, he knows a bit about technology and he's he's into that. And I think he's I would go just to listen to some music, you know, staying somewhere in the middle of Brooklyn, Bronx, and stuff. Yeah, that too. Yeah. I guess music is probably going to be first reason for me to go over <laughs> with the technology. Good. Moby lives. Moby lives in New York. I'd like to meet Moby if he's, <laughs> he's, he's around there. <laughs> he's not on tour or anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a, a lot of people. I, I cannot really. So you haven't figured out yet. You, no. you know you're going, but you're not sure what you want to do there. No, I think it's just guess get there and see and see. Decide yeah. on the place. I'm not I'm not good good with planning trips and planning routes and stuff. Yeah, so and I'm more on of, the list yeah, I'm so. more of a... I want to go there. I want to go there so. it's, Good. It's much more rewarding, I think. Just exploring rather than... Alexandre Badiou was with us on Skisanas TV. He was done for Yahoo Theater. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Bye.